Am I in the air? Well, all right, all right, all right. What is going down, everybody? And welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega, and I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me once again to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, non-spoiler reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? It is season 28. It is episode 11, and tonight's show is titled... Let me tell you about my best friend. We're going to be breaking down the news from March 13th through today, March the 20th. Now, for those of you keeping attention to the date, yes, it is March 20th. It is a Wednesday, and I have failed you all once again by not broadcasting and dropping an episode on Tuesday like we normally do. I am a day late, but I got a lot going on right now, man. I got a crazy ass pack rat situation going on in my house and it's driving me crazy and i had to have the good people over at truly nolan to come out today and and help me out and and work with me to try to figure out how to stop these goddamn rats uh and i want to shout out kyle man thanks kyle for stopping by and helping me out with truly nolan um also a fan of the show uh he listens to am i on the air so hey hopefully you hear this episode and i thank you for uh stopping by and recognizing and let me know that you listen to the podcast that definitely made my day so thank you kyle over at truly nolan so hopefully they'll get that taken care of but i need to get you guys taken care of with the latest and the greatest in entertainment news we're gonna be talking a movie we're gonna be talking a couple tv shows and then of course as always we're going to get through the news of the week. So let's jump on into it. My movie review of the week is Imaginary. Imaginary is the new Blumhouse horror movie that I've actually been looking quite forward to. This is directed by, um, it, like I said, it's Blumhouse. The trailer came out. The trailer looked intriguing, right? We had an imaginary friend. We had a little haunted uh, teddy bear named Chauncey. I'm not going to be friends anymore, Chauncey. Um, Chauncey making the little girl do some bad stuff. And let me tell you about it. Meet Chauncey. He's not imaginary, and he's not your friend. When Jessica moves back into her childhood home with her family, her youngest stepdaughter, Alice, develops an eerie attachment to a stuffed bear named Chauncey that she finds in the basement. Alice starts playing games with Chauncey that begin playful and become increasingly sinister. As Alice's behavior becomes more and more concerning, Jessica intervenes only to realize Chauncey is much more than the stuffed toy bear she believed him to be. So like I said, was looking forward to this. I like Jeff Wadlow as a director. Um, Blumhouse is typically pretty good. This had DeWanda Wise in it, which is cool. And I was like, okay, I'm sold. Let's check it out. Let's see what we do. So if you remember when I reviewed um, Night Swim, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so, that was a Blumhouse movie. That was the first big movie of 2024, and it absolutely sucked. I hated Night Swim. One star. Hated Night Swim. So you could you could think you can only go up from there, right? And here's what I'll tell you. Imaginary is a step up from Night Swim. Here's what sucks. The movie sucks. And Imaginary, I'm going to jump right to my score, only gets one star also. So Blumhouse... You are two for two, my friends, in 2024 with two one-star movies, and that's concerning to me. And then I saw an article the other day that said, you know, what's going on with Blumhouse? They've released two of the worst horror movies in years, and we're only, you know, three months into the year. And I connected with that article because I, was, I felt seen. I was like, this is what I'm talking about. I've been dealing with this shit. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know if it's because Blumhouse is really trying hard to do these PG-13 movies, 
but they don't work. You know, I had a problem with Five Nights at Freddy's because it was a PG-13 movie, but I kind of understood it because there is some younger kids that understand that franchise and probably wanted to see the movie. I'll let it slide. There should have been an unrated cut, and there wasn't. And then Night Swim comes out. It's PG-13. There's no real scares. It sucks. And then Imaginary, oh, this looks really cool. I can't wait to see it. Then I saw it was PG-13 again, and I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, that's not good. And then I watched the movie, and it sucked. There's just really no scares. Again, this movie's an hour and 44 minutes, and nothing really happens until about an hour and a half in. So congratulations on your last 14 minutes being riveting. Um, But the first hour and a half sucked. Nothing happened. It was boring. It was drug out. And, you know, the only things that happened in the movie are the things you see in the trailer. So um, the bear's not scary. The the acting is kind of eh. The story sucks. It's like, I don't know what they were trying to do. And I feel very disappointed because I loved the trailer a lot. Both trailers that came out, I was like, this movie looks cool. Can't wait to see it. And I was let down once again, actually for the second time this year. So I I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's not worth it. So again, Imaginary is now in theaters. It only gets one star matching up with its counterpart, Night Swim. Oh, Blumhouse, I hope the next film you release is a step up from there. Okay, switching gears on over to the TV side, I'm happy to be a lot more excited here for this. My new show of the week is a brand new Peacock original show, Apples Never Fall. Um, I saw this trailer about a month ago, thought it looked super intriguing, jumped into it. It just came out on Friday, watched the first couple episodes, and was hooked. This one stars Annette Benning, Sam Neill, Jake Lacey, Allison Brie. Great cast, right? So this centers around a couple, Sam Neill and Annette Benning. They're a married couple. Uh, Jake Lacey, Allison Brie, uh, Connor Merrigan, and um, Essie Randles uh, play their kids. So, you know, they got the two boys, the two girls. They're a really nice family that was raised up in this tennis court. Uh, they're tennis pros. Sam Neill and Annette Benning are tennis pros. They're in the spotlight. And within the first episode, Annette Benning goes missing. And throughout the next several episodes, we're trying to figure out what happened to her. You know, was she kidnapped? Was she murdered? You know, who was it? Was it one of the kids? Was it a neighbor? Was it the dad? You know, who did this? And what's happened to Annette Benning's character? This show is fantastic. It really, really is. I've already binged all... How many episodes was this? I believe... Uh, give me one sec. I think it was seven episodes. Yeah. Seven episodes. So, uh, follow the Delaney's who from the outside appear to be a, con- uh, a nice, good family. Former tennis coaches, Joy and Stan are parents to four adult children. After 50 years of marriage, they have finally sold their famed tennis academy and ready to start what should be the golden years of their lives. But after Joy disappears, her children are forced to re-examine their parents' marriage and their family history with fresh eyes. So, Um, again, seven episodes, I've already binged all seven. I was hooked. So for the last several days, I've been like, we got to watch apples never fall. We got to watch the show. We got to get through it. Finished it last night. And it was incredible. This is also another, this show is another reason why I didn't record the show last night because I wanted to finish this show because I've been so hooked. This show's awesome. The acting's great. The story's great. Um, it's just intriguing all the way around and it really keeps you guessing. And I enjoyed the hell, hell out of it. So big thumbs up and big recommendation. Check out apples. Never fall. The entire season is now streaming on Peacock and then sticking with streaming. Um, I just finished binging season three of girls five Eva. Um, girls five Eva was a show for the first two seasons. It was a Peacock original also. And it's a show that centers around a 90s pop group, right? Think about like a Spice Girls. Um, They they were a very famous pop group like in the 90s and then they fell off. They kind of went their separate ways. And then in season one, they reunite and they try to put out a new album and kind of, you know, get their spark back. Season one and two, very, very funny. This show, it's not going to be for everyone. It's It's a comedy show, but it's very borderlines like a parody 
right? It's not a parody, but it borderlines that. So you can see, like, it's very over-the-top comedy, and you got to be kind of in that mood. But I love season one and season two. And then Peacock decided to not renew it. They canceled the show after the second season. And then Netflix swooped in and said, hey, we'll do it. So Netflix is now the home of season one and two, but they just released the brand new season three, the first time as a Netflix show. So the new season is only six episodes, so very short season because the episodes are only like 25 minutes apiece. Um, so we binge through it really, really quick. Finished it up, and it's really funny. Is it as strong as season one and two? No, it's not. It's definitely a step down, but it's still really funny. Every episode had stuff that made me crack out loud um, and giggle and just like, it's just very quirky, and I like that kind of comedy. Like, especially if you watch like a Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, uh, 30 Rock, you know, just different things. Um, it, it's just, it, it's really, really funny, man. I don't know what else to say. It, the concept is cool. And um, I like what they do with this. Will it get a season four? I don't know. Because you know how Netflix has their like top ten? Well, every time I've checked, it hasn't even been on the top ten. And this is something new that just came out over the weekend. So uh, this might be the end of the road there for Girls 5 Evo. But I do thank Netflix for at least picking it up and giving us another season of it. So you can binge the entire season now on Netflix for season three. And lastly, I just want to shout out uh, 911 is back. I forget... Um, I forget what season they're on now, but it was a Fox show and then ABC picked it up and, uh, you know, so now it's, it's, it's its first time over on NBC, uh, not NBC. It was on Fox. Now it's on ABC. Um, and it's season seven, by the way, season seven. I can't believe the show's been on that long, but I love 911. I love the spinoff show. 911 Lone Star. Can't wait for Lone Star to come back. So just glad this show is obviously majorly delayed because of the strikes, but it's back. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. I really enjoy it. So just wanted to let you all know that 911 is now back for season seven. It's on ABC and then streams the next day on Hulu. So that's what I got for you guys from the review standpoint. We got Imaginary now in theaters, one out of five stars. Over on the TV side, highly recommend Apples Never Fall over on Peacock. Girls 5 Veva Season 3 over on Netflix and 911 over on ABC and Hulu. Okay, let's talk box office, guys. Coming in at number 10, it's Ordinary Angels. Number 9 is the debut of the American Society of Magical Negroes. Um, I think this movie looks pretty good. I enjoyed the trailer, but it had zero marketing, so I'm not surprised at how bad it did. I mean, it was number nine, and it only made $1.3 million. Ooh, that's a very rough debut, but um, this definitely seemed more like a streaming movie than a theatrical movie, so I will see it one day, but I understand kind of where the box office lies. Number eight was One Life. Number seven is Bob Marley, One Love. Number six is another debut for Love Lies Bleeding. I do want to see this one bad. Everybody I know that's watched it says it's really, really good. So looking forward to checking that one out. Number five is Cabrini. Number four, there's Imaginary, 5.5 mil. Number three is another debut, Arthur the King. Um, almost went and saw this over the weekend, and then I chose to see Imaginary instead. I should have went to see Arthur the King, uh, making its debut at number three with 7.6 million. That's a new Mark Wahlberg true story with the dog. Number two is Dune Part 2 with 28.5 million, uh, only dropping 38.3% from the previous week. And number one, once again, with just a 48% drop, is Kung Fu Panda 4 with 30.1 million dollars so it was a tight race over the weekend between kung fu panda and dune but kung fu won out for the weekend um but both movies doing very very good man dune part two already bringing in over 204 million um that's pretty damn awesome it's more than what the first movie made in its entire theatrical run and dune has only been out for three weeks so pretty damn insane when you think of it on that aspect. So there you guys go. That's the box office. Now let's switch gears and get into our news of the week. Okay, guys. So remember, if you want to see any of these trailers, if you want to read the fuller articles, make sure you check out our X page. All right. And for those of you that don't know X, it's just Twitter. So nothing too crazy over there. So once again, it's twitter.com slash am I on the air to make sure you check that all out. So Netflix dropped the first full trailer for Jennifer Lopez's new action movie Atlas. This premieres on May 24th and it's a big sci-fi movie. 
I thought it looked fantastic. I thought it looks really good. It's Jennifer Lopez. Uh, Shang-Chi is in this. Simu Liu, who I love. Uh, Sterling K. Brown, who is awesome. So it's got a great cast. This looks really, really good. Um, I don't know if any of you have played the video game Titanfall. That's what this movie looks like. It looks like a Titanfall live action movie, and I'm super down with that. So check out the trailer for Atlas, which comes out May 24th. And then we were just talking on last week's show about, you know, hey, when are we going to get more stuff for The Crow? We got the trailer, guys. The new trailer finally came out. Uh, This movie comes out in theaters June 7th. And I'm pretty damn excited. I really liked this trailer. I know a lot of people are hating on it. There's a lot of people that just cannot give it a chance because they love that original movie so much. And here's what I'm going to say about that. I love the original movie so much. The original Crow was my favorite movie of all time for a very, very long time. And it's still in my top five. I love the original Crow. So if anybody should be upset by this, it should be me. But reboots, revisions don't bother me because, again, the original movie doesn't just vanish. It doesn't just go away and make, oh, man, now the new crow is out. I'll never be able to see the Brandon Lee version again. It's, It's not how it works. We'll always have the original version. But what's wrong with someone else taking a stab at it? For me, like, like, here's a true conversation. I have a good friend who lives in Florida And The Crow is his favorite movie of all time. So uh, we grew up together. And I remember, you know, sharing the love for The Crow, right? It was both of our favorite movies forever. So I shared the trailer with him when it came out. And he he had the typical internet response, which was, I don't like this. I don't want to watch this. How dare they? This is not my Crow. And to me, again, trying to be the rational one, said, you know what? I explained it. I was like, dude, your original movie's still there. It doesn't go away. But as someone that loves the original movie so much, why wouldn't you want to see a new take, a new version? You know, why wouldn't you want to see a new stab at a story that you love so much? It's been over, I think we're going on the 30th anniversary. 30 years, guys. It's okay to redo The Crow at this point. And I know there's a lot of controversy. I know Alex Proyas, who directed the original Crow, was like, this is blasphemy. Brandon, you know, died making this movie. How dare they? And I get all that. But you know what? It, it's it's out of respect. It's a lot of people that love that original movie that wanted to work on revisioning it. And I want to see what they do. If this movie sucks, we don't ever have to watch it again. We'll always have the Brandon Lee version. But if it's cool, man, now we got something else really tight in the lore of The Crow. And that gets me excited as a fan of The Crow. So I hope you guys will give it a fair shot. I know people are like thumbing it down and disliking it over on YouTube and stuff. It just, I just don't get it. You know, let's watch the movie and let's judge it on that merit first. So I say give it an open mind. There you go. All right. Stars. The network stars, which of course, does did the show power and then after power ended they got all these spin-offs now right you got raisin canaan you got ghost you got force well it looks like they're going to do a fourth spin-off now it's a new prequel series titled origins which will follow the beginning story of characters ghost and tommy played in the original power show by amari hardwick and joseph sakura So, of course, Joseph Sikora is still playing Tommy to this day. He's in the spinoff force. Um, Omari, for those, I don't want to spoil it, but those of you who watch the show, you know what's up. So, this here is, like I said, Origins, the beginning of their characters. How did they meet? How did they forge their friendship and start their, you know, their friendship building up to what we saw in Season 1 of Power? Um, I love this idea. This gets me excited. I love this universe and I love these two characters. And this is what I've wanted from spinoffs is like, give me, give me more. I think that's why I like the ghost spinoff so much because I'm still kind of, it's almost like a sequel series to, to power. So you're continuing with characters, you know, and love. Um, so I would love to see the story. I honestly thought that the Raising Canaan show was going to lead into him meeting the younger Tommy and Ghost and kind of seeing how that all goes. But I guess they're not going to go that route. And now they're going to do their own show 
over on stars. So I'm excited about it. Let's do it. Origins. Um, why not? Right? Like, let's keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. Um, I'm excited about that. So it was very, very stoked to see that news drop. Okay. What else we got here? Uh, the zone of interest. This is a Oscar nominated movie here. It's going to be streaming on max very soon. It's streaming debut will be April 5th. So keep your eye out there for the zone of interest. Um, again, speaking of Oscars, uh, Barbie is on max poor things just came out on Hulu. So a lot of those, uh, nominated films, Oppenheimer's on Peacock. So a lot of them you can now stream already, which is pretty cool. Uh, Jernay Smollett, who I absolutely love. She is fantastic. She is joining Taryn Egerton in the upcoming Apple TV plus drama called Firebug. We have the trailer for breathe, which is Jennifer Hudson's new thriller. Um, producers that worked on violent night and nobody um, kind of updated that they are still working on a violent night too and they want to do a nobody too so both sequels are in active development and they hope to start filming um i think they said they were going to do nobody two first uh by the end of the year and then do violent night two next year so that'd be pretty cool man i know a lot of people would love to see sequels to those so let's do it Jennifer Garner is joining Paul Walter Hauser to lead a new true crime movie called Fruitcake. We have the trailer for Wildcat, which sees Maya Hawke playing Flannery O'Connor in Ethan Hawke's new directed movie. Um, we have the trailer for Ezra, which is Bobby Cannavale, along with Robert De Niro. They star in a new family drama movie by a little kid named Ezra, uh, who has autism. So um, I think it's a true story. Rose Byrne is in this, too. So really strong cast. Uh, trailer was pretty solid. So looking forward to Ezra. Uh, Z Nation, man. This is a show I didn't think I'd hear about ever again. But it sounds like sci-fi might be bringing back the zombie TV series six years after they canceled it. So very interesting, but you might be seeing Z nation return pretty soon. We have the trailer for sweet dreams, which is Johnny Knoxville's new baseball drama. Um, outer range is coming back for season two. Very soon. The terminal list prequel dark wolf has started filming. This is Chris Pratt's, um, prime video show with Taylor kitsch. Uh, they're doing a prequel series right now for it. So that just started filming. We have the trailer for Franklin, which is Michael Douglas's new Apple TV Plus led series. We have the trailer for Renegade Nell. That's right, uh, Disney Plus's new action period drama. Eric Bana is set to lead a new Netflix miniseries called Untamed. The Fall Guy had an early screening over on South by, South by Southwest. Uh, and early reactions call the movie one of the best action comedies in years. After all the critics have seen it. This movie already holds a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes, man. And every review I've seen has said it's got heart. It's got great action. Um, it's funny that it's just, it's a really, really solid movie. And I love hearing this praise, man, because Fall Guy was on my top 10 most anticipated. I'm looking really forward to this. And now I'm looking even more forward to it after all the great reactions. We have the new Godzilla X Kong trailer. This is more of a little tease They kind of show what's happened to these characters In the previous movies and now teaming up For this new film uh, Tickets are now on sale So check that out Remember the movie comes out uh, in just a couple weeks On March 29th Suits LA has cast Alice Lee uh, To star in the show SNL has tapped Kristen Wiig and Ryan Gosling To host April episodes So that'll be awesome Two very strong hosts right there For SNL um, Harold and the Purple Crayon, Zachary Levi unleashes his imagination in the first poster for the adaptation of the beloved children's book. Um, so check out the poster and the trailer actually just dropped today for it. And we got that posted as well. The Sandman season two will bring more death to the Neil Gaiman Netflix series. Finn Wolfhard, uh, we have an interview with him talking Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, um, Stranger Things Season 5, and the new SNL 1975 movie that they're putting together. Um, let's see here, Snowpiercer. So this show had been on TNT for the first three seasons. Then they made Season 4, but then TNT dropped it. And for the last, I feel like the last year... 
Um, they've been shopping it around saying who wants season four. And finally, a network has stepped up AMC. That's right. So AMC has bought it and uh, Snowpiercer season four will be launching on AMC pretty soon. Uh, Disney plus now officially streaming the Taylor Swift Eras tour concert. Taylor's version. That's right. With four additional acoustic songs. Uh, this just came out on Disney plus on March 14th and it is already breaking records over 5 million streams just over the weekend. I think my daughter contributed 1 million of those, uh, alone. So yes. So check out the heiress tour movie over on Disney plus, um, lots of new songs there. Black Mirror coming back in 2025. Six new stories. So get ready for that. Uh, Ghoulies might be coming back as well. That's right. The creator of Ghoulies is planning a new trilogy in the Creature Feature franchise. So that'd be crazy, man. I forgot all about Ghoulies. So I would love to see what they could do with that in 2024, 2025, right? Ty Burrell. Love this guy. Of course, Modern Family. He signed on to star in a new ABC sitcom called Forgive and Forget. I will be there day one. Um, Ki Hu Kwan has a new action movie coming out soon called With Love. So keep your eye out for that. Um, the next Apple TV Plus miniseries is going to be coming out soon is called The Big Cigar. Bad Boys 4 star Vanessa Hutchins. She praises the action-packed sequel. She thinks everybody's going to really like this one. And I'm sure it's going to be pretty damn awesome. I'm ready for some Bad Boys 4. I'm waiting for that trailer, man. Let's go. Uh, Jamie Dornan is set to star as twin brothers in the new movie The Undertow. Fright Crew Season 2 has been given a trailer. And it's going to debut on Hulu and Peacock. Very interesting, man, uh, to have it on both those streamers. Uh, Emma Stone and Yorgos Latimos, their next movie is called Kinds of Kindness, and that's going to be coming out this summer, so keep your eye out for that as well, too. This is the pairing from Poor Things that, you know, won her an Oscar, so why not do another movie with them, right? Uh, the new A24 rom-com called Eternity is going to be starring Miles Teller, Elizabeth Olsen, and Calum Turner, so very strong cast there for that. Uh, we have the trailer for The Greatest Hits, which is Lucy Boynton and David Cornsweet, uh in the time travel rom-com movie. That's right. Your new Superman is in this, but this looks pretty cheesy, pretty generic kind of rom-com. Um, did not like this trailer, but you can check it out for yourself. The Bear Creator has been tapped to direct The Lincoln Highway. Jurassic World, we know that they're doing another movie, right? Comes out next year. And the reports, and again, I say reports because it's not confirmed, but the reports are that the lead role for the movie has been offered to Scarlett Johansson. I love the sound of that. I love Scarlett, and I think her leading a Jurassic World movie makes a lot of sense. I can see it. I can envision it, and I love it. So hopefully this turns out to be true. Uh, let's see here. SVU 25, Kelly Giddish is set to return ahead of the season finale. Suits LA has also added one tree Hill alum, Brian Greensburg as a series regular, Jason Bateman and Jude law are set to star in a new Netflix limited series called black rabbit. Hell yeah. That sounds cool. Oh, going back to power. We found out the power book Two ghost, which like I said, is my favorite spinoff. It's going to end with the upcoming season four. That's right. Season four will be its final season. And they did drop it, drop a teaser trailer. So check that out. Um, you know, hate to see it go, but you know, let's not run these shows into the ground. So season four, I can, I can dig it. So check it out. Uh, Greta Gerwig, along with Isla Fisher and Eve Hoosen, are set to star in the star studded cast of Noah Bumbach's coming of age Netflix film that he's putting together. The Bear not only is filming season three, but they're going to film season four as well. They're going to film them back to back. So very cool there, man. So kind of interesting, but it makes a lot of sense, right? Your stars of this show are really ramping up their uh, profiles, right? Everybody, Jeremy Allen White, A.O. Itaberry. Um, oh, man, I forgot the other dude's name, but he's going to be in Fantastic Four. Uh, Eben Moss Baccarat. Uh, he's going to be in Fantastic Four. So everybody's getting busy. So it's very smart on them to say, you know what? The show's going to do good. Let's just renew it for season four and we'll film it back to back while we have everybody for season three. So absolutely love that idea and glad we're getting more bear because I love the show. 
Uh, Sydney Sweeney teasing that she's heading back to Euphoria set for season three. I know a lot of people have been waiting to uh, see if they're going to do another Euphoria. She's making it seem like they will. So there you go. Um, let's see here. Oh, Kihu Kwan's action movie. We talked about it a little bit earlier with love. It's uh, actually going to come out in 2025 now. They pushed it back a little bit. So that's when that's going to come out. Reports are saying Patty Jenkins is back working on the Star Wars Rogue Squadron movie that she was supposed to do several years back, and then the plug got pulled, and she was working on Wonder Woman 3, and now that there is no Wonder Woman 3, she's saying she's back working on Rogue Squadron, but this has not been confirmed by Star Wars, it hasn't been confirmed by Disney, Um, a lot of people tapped in are saying, you know, yeah, she might be working on a script, but there's no way this movie's happening. They're not going to green light it. It's just kind of, you know, they had made a deal for her to make a script and she's got to make a script plain and simple. And that's that, but it would probably never move past that stage. So we'll keep you posted, man. You know, I'm kind of on the fence about a rogue squadron movie. It could be cool, but it could be dumb. It could be a waste of time. I don't know. This sounds just kind of meh. Uh, the Mark Wahlberg movie, The Family Plan, which came out a couple months ago over on Apple TV+, Plus, uh, they're saying that a sequel is being talked about. That's right. They're talking to the director, they're talking to Mark, and they're thinking about doing a sequel. The movie was very highly streamed. I think it was the most streamed movie ever for Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, I dug this movie. It's not the greatest, but it was a fun little family flick, so I wouldn't mind seeing a sequel to that. I was very excited about this. A Teen Titans movie is in development over at the DCU. Um, the girl that's writing um, the Supergirl movie is actually writing the script for this. No word, though, specifically, if this is going to be like an Elseworlds movie or this movie will take place inside James Gunn's DCU, we don't know yet. Um, I would expect it to be in the DCU, and I hope that they keep the crew from the animated series, right? Like Robin. Raven, Starfire, Cyborg, Beast Boy. That's that's the Teen Titans crew I want. Um, obviously, we had the HBO Max show, Titans, that ran for like three or four seasons. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I don't expect them to do it in a very big comedy way like a Teen Titans Go, but I hope that they do it in a more straightforward kind of with that, um, the crew that I, that I mentioned. Now, since I know they want to do the Batman movie, in the DCU with Damien as Robin, it would kind of make sense, you know, that in the Teen Titans movie, you would have Nightwing, right? That that we've already moved kind of past that point. Batman had Dick Grayson as Robin. He's moved into Nightwing. Now he leads the Titans, right? So that's kind of what I'm going to assume at this point, but no official confirmation other than this movie is in development. So, but I'm very excited about that, man. I love the Teen Titans. So that's very, very cool. Uh, Gremlins, uh, Joe Dante is set to direct a reimagining of Little Shop of Horrors and Roger Corman will be producing. So that's very cool there. Uh, Among Us is getting an animated series and uh, Elijah Wood and Randall Park are going to do voices on the new upcoming series. A Leprechaun reboot is going into production. That's right. And they say it will go back to the franchise's roots. Aims to be scary as hell. And hilarious. I love it. Uh, I used to really love the Leprechaun movies. They went very off the rails by the end there. Um, But a reboot could be really, really cool, especially if it's scary as hell and hilarious. I like the terminology. Uh, True Blood Star um, is joining Rhea Seahorn in Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan's new upcoming series. Um, So there you go there. I don't remember what her name is. I do apologize. um, But. There you go. Richard Armitage is joining another Harlan Coben project. It's going to be called Missing You. An untitled Bridesmaids comedy is in the movie works over at Sony. And no, this is not a sequel to Bridesmaids. This has nothing to do with the Kristen Wiig Bridesmaids movie. This is just a movie that will involve Bridesmaids. So it is in the works over at Sony. Doctor Who Season 14 is going to get simultaneous Disney Plus and BBC release dates uh, for the Nakuti Gatwa series. Uh, Amanda Peet is joining the Apple TV Plus drama Your Friends and Neighbors. So very cool there. Bill Hader has been tapped to star in an animated Cat in the Hat movie. I love it. He's a great voice actor, so that's going to be really, really solid. 
Uh, in that up, we talked about Black Mirror coming back for season seven next season. Uh, we also found out that one of the episodes is going to be a sequel episode to the USS Callister episode that was in season six. So very interesting that they're going to do a sequel episode. Uh, this is kind of the Star Trek parody episode that they did. So very interesting. So I like that. We have all your winners for the NAACP Image Awards, so check that out. Abbott Elementary, Queen Charlotte, and Swarm were among some of the winners, but we got the full list up on the Twitter page. NCIS Origins has cast Marielle Molino as a female lead opposite Austin Stowell. Um, Madam Web is now available on digital, so if you missed it in theaters, which I know it just came out a month ago, but is now available on streaming, so you can check that out whenever you like. Um, let's see here. We talked about that. We talked about that. Uh, we have the first poster for Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon Part Two: The Scar Giver. Uh, I like the tra- the poster. It looks pretty pretty cool. The new trailer dropped. The movie hits Netflix on April nineteenth. I actually have not watched the trailer yet. I keep forgetting that this trailer dropped and, uh, but I'm excited because there was a little tease for this movie at the end of part one. And I really liked it. I think part two looks like it's going to be more action packed. It's going to be crazier. I didn't love part one, but I'm very optimistic for part two. So Hopefully the trailer is pretty cool. I do need to check it out. I'll check it out probably after I do the show here tonight. Um, But check out that trailer. Check out the poster. And once again, the movie hits Netflix on April 19th. Congratulations to Doom Part 2, which passed $500 million at at the global box office. So that is pretty damn awesome, man, for that movie. It way overperformed what I thought. Uh, Nickelodeon, uh, their toxic environment during Dan Snyder's reign has been examined in a new investigation discovery documentary series that you can now watch over on Max. And I've heard some crazy things about this thing, so I'm definitely going to be checking it out uh, probably this weekend. So you can look for that right now on Max. Uh, let's see here. So check this out. The filmmakers behind Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey have unveiled that they're going to do the Poo-verse, right? The Poo-verse monsters assemble. That's correct. They will be bringing together Pooh, Bambi, Tinkerbell, Pinocchio, Peter Pan, Tigger, Piglet, the Mad Hatter, and Sleeping Beauty for an IP bludgeoning frenzy that will come out next year in 2025. That's right. We already had uh, Pooh, Blood, and Honey, uh, part one and two. Part two comes out in just a couple weeks. And now, you know, they're not even going to bother doing all these other, because uh, they talked about this about a year ago, that they were going to then do um, a Peter Pan movie, then they were going to do a Bambi movie, and then eventually they'd bring them all together, Avenger style, to kind of rip some shit up, right? But now it seems like, you know, hey, they did a couple poo, uh, poo Blood and Honeys, so let's jump right into the Monsters Assemble, right? Let's get the, the Poo-diverse going, um, this is batshit crazy. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey sucked ass, but I'm still excited to see the sequel and I've got to be excited to see all the monsters assemble, uh, for an Avengers style bludgeoning. So let's go. Uh, Disney's wish is coming to Disney plus on April 3rd. So there you go. If you missed it in theaters, check that out. We have the poster and trailer for star Wars, new show, the acolyte, which hits Disney plus on june 4th so that's right that's when you'll get your next dose of star wars june 4th the acolyte i dug this trailer again a lot of people talking shit online a lot of people you know just are so negative when it comes to star wars this looks interesting man it's a small trailer it's only about a minute and a half but i dug it we get lots of jedi we get lots of cool stuff and we're in a timeline that we've never really visited in live action so I'm down in an age of light, a darkness rises. This is the brink, the start of the Sith. It looks really, really cool. The Acolyte, let's get ready for it. Are you a Spider-Man fan? Are you ready? Because Spider-Man is coming back to theaters, man. And I'm excited about this. All eight live action Spider-Man movies will be officially returning to theaters this year. That's right. Starting on April 15th. 
they're going to run all eight movies. So every Monday, it's a Monday. So every Monday, starting on April 15th, you'll get a movie. So on April 15th, it's Tobey Maguire, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. And then the following week will be Spider-Man 2. And then the following week is Spider-Man 3. And then the following week is The Amazing Spider-Man. And then the following week is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And then that's with the Andrew Garfields. And then we jump into the Tom Hollands and we get Homecoming. And then we get Far From Home. And then we get No Way Home. So, man, that's going to be pretty cool, man. So every Monday... I think I might try to do this. I might grab my daughter, grab my wife, and just we'll go do some spider Manning every single Monday. I think it could be pretty damn cool. And that's going to run through June 3rd. So it starts April 15th, and will culminate on June 3rd. So I love it. I love it. Um, Let's see here. Michelle Pfeiffer is set to star in Amazon's new holiday comedy, Oh What Fun. Uh, Storm Reid has been tapped to star in Tayana Taylor's directorial debut called Get Light. Jumanji 4 is still in the works That's right, that's what Karen Gillan says She says they're still working on it, still in pre-production Still coming up with that correct script And then they would love to do Jumanji 4 That'd be awesome I love those movies They are super, super funny uh, Gillian Anderson leads Netflix's new Next royal family drama Called Scoop And we have the trailer there for that Hapless is coming to Peacock Jesse Plemons reportedly is joining Emma Stone in Yorgos Latimos Save the Green Planet. Um, let's see here. Brandon Routh, along with Mina Savari, are set to lead a new horror comedy movie called Ick. Um, Marvel Studios EP um, confirms that a Nova project is in very early development. So, um, you know, we're probably still long ways away, but they are looking at it and trying to come up with an idea for Nova. So that'd be pretty cool. We have the season two trailer for Fraggle Rock. So check that out. Uh, the Wolfman movie has begun filming over on Blumhouse. Reba vet Melissa Peterman is set to join Reba McIntyre in the upcoming NBC comedy pilot. Chrissy Metz along um, she, this is her first th- post This Is Us role. She will clash with the hunting wives in a new drama over on Stars. NBC has canceled LA Fire and Rescue. Mr. Beast has a new reality show called Beast Games. It will be the biggest reality competition series in TV history, and this will be streamed over on Prime Video. All right, going back to the cat in the hat. That's right, Warner Brothers will release an animated movie. Based on Dr. Seuss's The Cat in the Hat, it will release in 2026, and the voice cast includes Bill Hader as the cat, along with Quinta Brunson from Abbott Elementary, Bowen Yang from SNL, and Zayochil Gomez, of course, uh, from Babysitter's Club and Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, so a really strong cast. I like it. Uh, anyone but you A lot of people loving this movie Rom-com, big movie With Sydney Sweeney uh, This is going to hit Netflix on April 23rd So in about a month You'll be able to check this one out on streaming We have the brand new trailer for Furiosa This is the second trailer Furiosa Mad Max Saga Will hit theaters on May 24th Awesome trailer, looking really forward to this movie Very, very much Um, So A rumor started hitting that Aaron Taylor Johnson had been formally offered the role of James Bond. And the internet went crazy. Uh, And then later that day, the report said, no, he hasn't been offered it. Uh, That was just a fake rumor. So who knows? Who knows what's really happening? We got some credible sources saying both things, that he was offered, that he wasn't offered. So who knows? We'll just have to wait and see the official announcement. Now, what do we think about Aaron Taylor Johnson as James Bond, though? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I like Aaron Taylor Johnson a lot. Would he be my pick for Bond? No. Uh, My pick would still be Henry Cavill. I want Henry Cavill to be Bond very, very bad. Um, You know, uh, but if it's not Cavill, I'm okay with Aaron Taylor Johnson. Still not my pick, but... I don't mind it at all because I really, really do like him. So we'll see how it plays out. Pierce Brosnan is joining Steven Soderbergh's new thriller, Black Bag. Annabelle Wallace is joining the cast of the sci-fi thriller, Mercy, which is Chris Pratt's new movie. Uh, Olivia Cook, along with Ree Ziffons, has been cast in a new killer squirrel movie from Craig Roberts called The Scurry. 
Jeffrey Wright is joining Denzel Washington in Spike Lee's remake of High and Low. Um, the Good Daughter, Jessica Biel, is going to lead a new limited series over on Peacock based on the book. So that would be pretty cool. I love Jessica Biel. That's going to be nice. New Amsterdam is getting a sequel series that will follow Max's daughter. That's in the works over at NBC. Jeff Daniels, along with Diane Lane, Lucy Liu, Emil Amin, and Tom Pelfroy, have, uh, they're going to join a new limited series called A Man in Full, the story of one man's fall from power and the ripple effects of those around him. This is based on the novel by Tom Wolfe. This is going to premiere on Netflix May 2nd, and we have a little, little, little teaser trailer for it. Um, but yeah, check that out. Speaking of little teaser trailers, uh, Fede Alvarez released a little teaser trailer for Alien Romulus, which is the new movie in the Alien universe. This movie takes place between Alien and Aliens. That's right. So right in the middle of one and two is where this movie lies. It is connected, but it's all new characters. It's different things going on. This trailer is only a minute long. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was awesome. Lots of face huggers. It looks batshit crazy. It looks bloody. And I'm down for it. I can't wait to see the bigger trailer. Uh, I believe in Fede Alvarez. He's a great director. He did the uh, Evil Dead reboot. He did Don't Breathe. Two super strong movies. I like his visual style. I like what he can do. And I think he's going to bring it with this movie. So August 16th, this one hits Alien Romulus. We have the trailer. We have the poster. Check it all out. A film adaptation of The Sims is in the works, right? That's that's crazy. Uh, Margot Robbie's company is actually going to produce it. So definitely, you know, they're feeling that IP like Barbie, right? They're like, oh, let's do The Sims now. I don't know how you really do a Sims movie, but you know what? They... I'm sure they got a great idea if they're moving forward with this. The Office showrunner and the Nathan For You co-creator are going to team up to do that new Office show. Still not officially greenlit yet, but it is set in the same world as the other Office show uh, for the U.S. version of The Office. So they're doing a new project in that universe. I'm curious to see what they come up with because two funny, funny dudes. Uh, Stephen Moffat confirms Doctor Who Return. You Season 5 has added some casting, man. So I love you. And yes, I love you if you're listening to the show, but I mean the show you over on Netflix. So Netflix has welcomed Pitch Perfect vet Anna Camp and Griffin Matthews to the U Season 5 cast for the upcoming final season of the hit thriller. So that's awesome there. Nice additions. We have the trailer for American Horror Story Delicate Part 2. So check that out. Migration is coming soon to streaming over on Peacock. So keep your eye out for that. David Schwimmer joining the cast of Disney Plus Goosebumps Season 2. Sky Med coming back for Season 3. We have the trailer for In a Violent Nature. Uh, We have the trailer for Parasite the Grey, which is Netflix's new sci-fi horror series. We have your first look photos at Beetlejuice 2. And I think the trailer's coming this week. (laughs) So keep your eye out for that. Um, The creator of Russian Doll gives an update basically saying the show's not been renewed, but it also has not been canceled. So we'll have to wait and see. So not much of an update, but it's kind of just lingering there. Uh, We have the trailer for Damaged, which is Samuel Jackson's new crime thriller movie. The never-ending story is being rebooted as a new live-action movie series, so very interesting there. Ryan Coogler's vampire movie with Michael B. Jordan has been given a new release date. It's March 7th, 2025, so there you go. That's going to be a good one there. Joshua Jackson set to star in a new ABC drama called Dr. Odyssey. That's going to be coming from Ryan Murphy. Mark Duplass has been cast opposite Ellen Pompeo in the new Hulu limited series that they're putting together. The Way Home has been renewed for season three over at the Hallmark Channel. Third and final Downton Abbey movie is being eyed. Dead Boy Detectives is coming soon. Keep an eye out for a new trailer uh, as we have some first look photos of the new series. NCIS Sydney has been renewed for season two over at CBS. Um, the, that girl Lele has been canceled over at Nickelodeon interview with a vampire has released a new extended season two trailer ahead of the May premiere. So check that out. Superman and Lois has added Douglas Smith as Jimmy Olsen in the fourth and final season. 
Jeff Goldblum is going to be playing Zeus in Netflix's Chaos, which is a new um, show based on Greek mythology. Um, so check out the trailer for that. Uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire comes out this weekend. I'll be going to the preview night tomorrow. Um, it's looking to scare up about $45 million at the box office. And uh, that will push the franchise to over a billion dollars collectively. So very cool there. Anatomy of a Falls Sandra Huller is reportedly in talks to join Liam Neeson's Naked Gun reboot. Brightburn 2. Um, supposedly the sequel was greenlit last year, but when James Gunn was asked about it, he says they have no plans to make the supervillain horror sequel. So either he's not involved and they're still going to make it anyway, or... I don't know. It's just on the back burner and they're not going to do it anytime soon. I would love to see another bright burn. I absolutely love that movie. So that would be, would have been pretty cool to see. We'll have to wait and see on that one there. Uh, the NCIS Tiva spinoff, uh, is going to be going to Paramount plus. It will not be on CBS. It will be going to Paramount plus directly. And on that note, that's the end of our show. We've done, we've caught you up on all the news. We're hitting that 50 minute mark. And that's what happens when you got one day's extra worth of stuff. Um, but make sure you check out all the new posters and everything on our Instagram. We got a lot of stuff posted up over there. So don't forget, am I on the air.com is the official webpage. It's got links to all the socials and everything and all the episodes. So you can check it all out. Am I on the air.com like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Follow us on Twitter at am I on the air. Follow me directly at DX Don mega. Make sure you subscribe to the show on whatever podcast platform you like to use. Apple podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, radio, Google podcast, uh, Amazon Music, whatever you listen to, Pandora, we're on everything. So make sure you subscribe, thumbs up, five stars, whatever you do on whatever platform you like to use the most. Subscribe to us on TikTok, Instagram, and of course, YouTube, youtube.com slash am I on the air, uh, where you can also subscribe to the podcast and listen to the podcast right there on the YouTube feed as well. Thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. You can follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio, all one word, reddragonsradio.com. And at pop culture underscore pros. Thank you guys for always streaming our show on demand. And that will do it for me today, March 20th, 2024. Like I said, we'll be checking out Ghostbusters Frozen Empire tomorrow. So we'll be talking about that in the next episode. And we'll see what else comes our way. So I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week. Take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all. Peace. Red Dragons!